Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me once again today. I appreciate your company. As you can see uh, behind me, there's a Christmas tree, which means it's uh, Christmas time, I guess. Now, Christmas time has a, a, a lot of uh, tradition attached to it, and uh, it has a lot of truth attached to it, but it also has a lot of other things attached to it that people just don't generally want to speak about. So today, I'm going to speak about those things because I never shy away from a topic and uh, if you want me to talk about a topic I'll, I'll gladly talk about it because I put all my references back to the Bible and which is basic common sense really that's what it is God is the the great creator of common sense which is often not common in our world today so there are things that people don't want to talk about at Christmas time and uh, the quirks and anomalies and all the things around it um, and We'll address them today. We'll, we'll have a look at those. So, you know, so, some people just don't like Christmas because they're, they're scared that they're going to have to meet up with their relatives um, and, 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 and that's, that's, that's going to be trouble because they haven't uh, figured out a way to get on with their relatives. And maybe sometimes you can't, but, you know, peace and good will of all men, it's Christmas, right? So th there's that. And, and then there's the friends that maybe you, you don't want to get together with. You don't want to spend a lot of time. Although they're friends, you know, you, you just, they're, they're, you're not, you don't quite gel. Um, you know, they might be family friends or something. You know, and, and then there's the people who give you very expensive gifts and you, you don't have the capacity to um, uh, to reciprocate that type of thing. And I, I, I've had that in my life quite a few times and I, I'm not ungrateful. You know, people have given me wonderful Christmas gifts, but, uh, you know, out of my capacity to... Um, to, to reciprocate so I just have to say thank you humbly and, and, and move on so there's, there's that fear as well you know or somebody you might forget to get a present for you know um, and, and that can happen I've done it before you forget to somebody or you forget to give them a card or something or you know or well, the other thing is somebody sends you a card you haven't heard from for 10 15 years and you get this card and and, and, and it, all these things happen don't they you know and and, and <laughs> There are people who don't like Christmas at all. They try and ignore it. They try and go away and hide somewhere or, or, or do something. I know a, a person uh, who was who actually a very public person and quite a very famous person. And at, at two weeks before Christmas, every year, he would go off to a, an island um, because he didn't, he didn't want to be part of the Christmas thing. He said it was all pagan, it was all nonsense, it was all rubbish, and he'd go off to this island and, 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 and spend his time there. Well, that worked for a while, but, you know, once he had children and, and that, and they wanted to be part of the Christmas thing, it didn't work anymore, did it? <laughs> so, yeah, he's now part of the Christmas festivities. Uh, that's what happens in life, isn't it? And you see, and there are those who want to ignore Christmas and... and Generally, that's a lonely thing. This means that they may not have friends, or, or you know, you know, somebody very close might have passed away, and and, and they're lonely at Christmas time, so they dread Christmas time. And there are those who who don't have any faith at all, um, so they just want to uh, try and get over Christmas, and you know, just maybe they just. just eat too much or shop too much just to do something to get over it because they don't want to acknowledge the fact that Christmas is about Christ with us. It's two words, Christmas, and that's Christ at Mass, which is Christ with us. Um, so, you know, and there are those people who say, well, Christmas is only for children. Really? Uh, well, maybe it is just for children, God's children. But not just for children, because that's where this uh, whole Santa Claus ideology comes in is, oh, it's just for children, you know? It's just a fantasy. Well, no, it's not a fantasy, folks. This is a real story. Go and look at history. And, and not just biblical history. Go and look at Roman history. Go and look at Jewish history. Go and look at a true secular history, and it will show you that Christ was born. That's what it will show you. Now, not all of them acknowledge that he's the saviour, but they will say that he was born, if it's true and honest history. We've got a coinage and a lineage and the writings to prove that these things actually took place. You see, but people replace Christ with it with a Santa Claus. And they go, oh, Santa Claus knows all about you. He knows if you've been good. He knows if you've been bad and all these things. No, that's God's job. That's not Santa Claus' job. And Santa Claus is not a real thing. It's a myth. Okay? It's a myth. And I never taught my children about Santa Claus. Because I want to lie to my children. And I don't want to think Christmas is a myth and a story and a makeup. I don't want them to believe that. 
They didn't suffer anything at all. They had gifts, we got Christmas trees, and there's all kinds of things. Let me bring to you Christians who have problems with Christmas. Now, this is absolutely a paradox, isn't it? How can a Christian possibly have problems with Christmas? Well, they do, and some do. Quirky and, and funny as it is, I've got a Christmas tree behind me. And some Christians go, no, you shouldn't have a Christmas tree. You shouldn't have decorations. Because that's pagan. Well, Christian, I don't worship this. Okay? This, 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 is, this is no form of worship. This is just something that brightens up my lounge room, tells people that it's, it's Christmas time. It's sparkly and shiny and gives off light. The light is Jesus Christ, not the Christmas tree. The light of the world is Jesus Christ. But that doesn't matter. I like to have decorations in my home. I like to have a Christmas tree in my home. Do I bow down and worship it? Certainly I do not. But that's what some Christians say. And then there are other Christians who go, well, no, we don't want to be part of the gift-giving thing because that's, that's all secular, that's all materialism. Well, the reason we give gifts at Christmas time is because God gave us the greatest gift ever given, Jesus Christ. It's just an acknowledgement of goodwill. Because didn't the angels say peace and goodwill towards men? Peace and goodwill towards men. Goodwill can mean a lot of things, folks. It can mean giving of gifts. It can mean spending time with somebody. That's a gift as well. It doesn't have to be a physical gift that you give somebody. But peace and goodwill. And I always say to people, you can have all the goodwill you want at Christmas, and lots of people do, but you never have the peace unless you know the real meaning of Christmas, unless you know the real Jesus Christ who, who came to earth to be the saviour of the world. You're not, you're not going to understand peace. Goodwill, yes. You know, we often read stories, don't we, about the, the, the wars in the world where they stopped at Christmas time and things like that. That was, that was goodwill. But then when Christmas was over, they went back to fighting because there was no peace because they didn't understand the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't understand the peace. They didn't understand the things that are there. They didn't understand things that, oh, well, that, that were just meant to be because God needed to reconcile himself to men. And then last group, before we, we, we go on to some read some text, the last group is those who are offended by the fact that it's Christmas. Oh my, here we go. The, 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 the melting, the walking snowflakes that walk around going, oh, it's an offence for Christmas. And they won't put up a nativity scene and they won't put up Christmas decorations because that would offend somebody who's not a Christian. Oh my goodness. Where does that begin and end, folks? <laughs> You know, I've been called probably a thousand things in my life because I'm a Christian. Am I offended? You bet I'm not. It makes me stronger, actually. But there's these little people who walk around going, I'm offended by a manger. I am offended by Christmas decorations. I am offended by a tree. And you know what? Some of our biggest retailers in this country have bought the lie of offence. You know what? When my children were young and many generations before my time were young, we would walk through the heart of the city and the shops would have Christmas displays that actually identified with Christmas. There would be decorations, there would be manger scenes, there, there would, would be scenes of children opening presents, there'd be Christmas trees, there'd be light sparkling. And people would spend hours going through the city just looking at these wonderful and beautiful lights from our major retailers. And you know what? It was a bonanza for these retailers when these people came because their sales and everything went through the roof because they keep the doors open a lot of the time. But now you know what? These very unbold retailers who've fallen for the lie of a fence Shame on you, and I'll, I won't call you by name, but you know who you are. You've got decorations in your window that mean nothing. Absolute zero. You've got some shiny paper, and you've got somebody standing there in a designer gown. And you say, happy seasons. You don't even say Merry Christmas, because that'll offend somebody. Shame on you people. God is watching. God is watching. And you know what? Let me tell you this. Your sales will be down, although materialism is rising in the world. But not only that, let me explain something to you because 
Let me tell you what happened when I was walking through the city and all these shops are there. You see, people still go there in the belief that these shops are going to identify something with Christmas. And many of them don't. It's happy seasons or have a good new year or something. Nothing to do with Christmas, a few shiny things, but mostly trying to sell something in the window, okay? Nothing to do with Christmas, okay? Children, adults, they go there and they look for this. And they don't find it. And let me tell you this, because I was standing there just a few years ago. I don't go now because it's a waste of time. But a few years ago I was standing there. And you know what? The children didn't want to look. They didn't want to see. They just wanted to walk past it, get to the playground, or get to the Christmas tree that was down the street. Oh, there's still a Christmas tree in the big square, yeah. That's where they wanted to get to. But why? Because there was nothing in those windows that represented what Christmas was really about. And to a child, to a child, they wanted to see something that represented Christmas. And that, because those windows didn't. And that's where you've come to, retailers. That's where you've come to. Because you bought the lie of offence. I could say I'm offended about anything. If I came into your shop and spoke to you and said, look, I'm offended you don't have a Christmas thing in there, you'd throw me out the shop. You see, this whole business of offence is just a nonsense to get rid of things you don't like and you don't want. I can just say I'm offended. Christmas is not a time of offence. It's a time of peace, goodwill and love. That's what it's a time of. And all these quirks and all these anomalies that I've just been through with you, there are a lot more as well, trust me, from both sides, from the secular side, from the Christian side. But one thing happens when you do that, and that you take away the deity and the very reason that Jesus Christ came to earth is because he loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That is what Christmas is, folks. Okay, let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you would consider lowly man to be back in your presence. And you'd give your son, your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to be born of a virgin in Bethlehem. That we may see through this wonderful gift that we could have reconciliation with you. It wasn't about religion. It was about a relationship with God. Father, we pray today, as we bring forth this Christmas message, that we could touch the hearts of those who've been tainted by other things about Christmas, by those who may not believe, or those who have somehow fallen into some of these other ideologies that exist around Christmas. Father, I pray that just a simple message of the love of Jesus Christ, the love of God, would exist and show people how they can have peace and goodwill at Christmas time. Through you, Lord, through our Saviour, through your love, through your mercy, through your grace. Father, I pray each and every person listening today would desire to have a personal relationship with you. In the wonderful name of Christ our Saviour, I do pray. Amen. Now let me explain to you that Christmas was given to us uh, by God for that reconciliation that we've spoken about earlier and it was brought to us by an angel called Gabriel. And we'll go to the book of Luke and I'll, I'll read you the first account of, of what is actually happening here. It's all been prophesied before, but this is where it's actually beginning for the Virgin Mary. So chapter 1 of Luke and then uh, in verse 26 we'll start. It says this, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, verse 27, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Verse 28, The angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Okay? She's blessed among women. Not above women, but among women. Very important. Not above women. Among women. All right? Verse 29. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, 
and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Folks, I don't know about you, but I know that uh, if an angel came into my presence and started speaking, I, I'd, I'd be pretty terrified. But this young lady is, is humble enough to understand, well, why would he speak to me? Why? It's very humble. It's very noteworthy. Verse 30, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. So there was fear there. There was fear. Because the angel knew there was fear. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And then listen to what Mary says here. She says here, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Now, this is where people um, get very mixed up. They get very mixed up about the whole uh, fact that a woman could carry a, a God in the flesh. Okay? H how can this be? And there are people who, who think that this is, this is all wrong and it's all mixed up. It was prophesied long before this happened that a virgin would conceive, okay? Not in, in, in a, the way a, a men conceive. This is a holy conception from God, okay? God is capable of anything. But when people start talking and, and put it into the, the ideology and, and the ways of man, they get totally mixed up. This is God. In the, in the flesh. This is God coming to earth. Okay? Holy man, holy God. And, and Mary, Mary knew not a man. But through God, all things are possible. That's what you have to realize. Okay? Not man's way, but God's way. And we move on. It says, verse 35, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of, of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Okay, so it was an intervention of the Holy Spirit. This is how Mary was able to bear a child. Okay, it was through God's intervention of the Holy Spirit. Okay, God placed Jesus Christ inside Mary as a virgin. A virgin was conceived. Now, that is very, very important. You see, because God to come in the flesh, had to be born of a woman. There was, if, if he came as an angel or something, there would be no reconciliation. There would be no way that we could actually understand the suffering and there'd be no way that God could reconcile himself to us and say, well, this is what you have to do. If he hadn't done it himself. You see, God is, is willing that none should perish. God wants everyone to understand what Christmas is all about and why Christmas came about. So the first thing today, as I've said to you, is that a virgin conceives, okay? Through the Holy Spirit, she conceived God within her womb and the child grew and the child was born and it was named Jesus Jesus is our saviour. It's a name above all names. It's a Lord of Lords. It's a King of Kings. He came to earth as a man, lowly, to be able to feel pain, to be able to feel suffering, but be able to also show miracles, love, compassion, mercy, grace, all the things that are overlooked by those who want to be deniers of Christ. Because they only ever point out Christ when he gave judgment upon sin. But they never call out his miracles. They never call out his mercy. They never call out his grace. They never call out his love. They never call out his peace. Oh, they're happy to scream out offense. But they won't accept the fact that all the other things are in Christ. And Christ has the right to judge. We don't, as Christians, don't have the right to judge you. But a holy God does. And you must realize that God's judgment is for all men. It's not just for some group of people. You know, you get a lot of people jump up and down and go, oh, you're offending me because I'm this or I'm that or the other. No, no, it's for everyone. It's for me, it's for you, it's for everyone. Okay? It's, it's not just the one group of people. God is a God of equality, folks. Absolute equality. ALM, all lives matter. Not just one group or another group or another group. 
And let me tell you folks that there will always be evil people who hate some kind of race out there. There will always be evil people out there who will hate you because of the colour of your skin. There will always be evil people out there who hate you because you're a Christian or you're some other faith. They will always exist. You will never eradicate that. Unless every single person on this earth came to Jesus Christ and knew the peace and goodwill. You would never eradicate that and you never will. But let me tell you this, all lives matter, ALM, and nothing else goes. Because that's what God says, all men are equal, all men are loved, all men have the opportunity to come to Christ. And Christmas all over this world is an opportunity, again, again, and again, and again, for people to see the Saviour. Actually, it's, it's there, it's there, and it's always there for everyone to see. It's not offensive. But if you choose anything to be offensive, it can. You can choose a cup of coffee to be offensive if you like. It's up to you. <laughs> Maybe it is to some health people, I don't know. But please, understand. It's about love. Christmas is about peace and goodwill towards men. The angels said it. They told the shepherds, this is peace and goodwill towards men. You'll find the babe lying in a manger. King of kings, the Lord of lords. Anyway, let's read on and we'll see and read more about when Jesus was actually born and what actually happened because there's a lot of misunderstanding about that as well. Now we'll continue reading in, in chapter 2 um, because that's where the story continues. It says here, chapter 2, verse 1, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. Verse 4, And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David. Verse 5, To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Isn't it interesting that the Christmas story gives us the first story of taxes as well, doesn't it? Yeah, gifts to the government. Hmm, there you go. <laughs> I don't know if they're voluntary gifts or not, I don't know. Hey, verse 6. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Isn't that an interesting thing um, that Christ is born in a manger not in a hotel or something like that. No, no, no. But so he can relate to all men. Um, that's that's the reason for God's uh, way there, isn't it? Okay. And uh, here we go. Verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Now, I want you to understand what sore afraid is, that's the most afraid you can possibly be. They, they were scared that it was the end of them. <sighs> Boy, they were sore afraid. Verse 10, the angel said unto them, fear not. Again, here we see the same thing that was said to Mary. Fear not, okay. Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. I want you to see that word, all people there. And it says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, now listen, verse 14, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and good will towards men. Peace and good will towards men. My Bible doesn't say offence. My Bible doesn't say quirks. My Bible doesn't say anomalies. My Bible doesn't say any kind of other things other than peace and good will towards men. That's what my Bible says. It doesn't say judgment to all men from other men. No, it doesn't say that. Judgment only comes from God. It doesn't come from men. Boy, boy. But it does in the, in the criminal system, and so it should. We've got to have that. But eternal judgment can only come from God, not from any, any Christian. Okay? It comes from God. And you know, uh, as I've said before, you know, um, people can get saved and go off and do silly things, and, and, and then people scream out, He didn't really know Jesus. Well, that's up to God. It's not up to me. It's not up to you. It's not up to anyone. 
Yeah, everyone's responsible for their own actions when they stand before God. And no, no, one, no one else, okay? And peace, good will towards men. And listen to verse 15. This is what happens, okay? And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Verse 16. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. You see, God anointed or appointed the people who were considered the lowest class of people, the shepherds. He anointed and appointed them to be the first people to go out and tell about Jesus Christ, didn't he? Did he anoint these religious people with hats on and robes on and all that to go out and do it? No, folks, he didn't. Because religion will never get you to heaven. Religion will not save you. Religion is what nailed Jesus Christ to the cross. You know, people for years go to me, you're too religious, you're too... And I say, listen, there's no religious bone in my body. No, no. Because religion is what nailed Jesus Christ to the cross. It was the religious to put him on the cross. Think about it, read about it, examine it. It's common sense. It was religious people and their beliefs that they were almighty that put him on the cross. And it was not for religion, folks. No, no, no. Religion will not get you to heaven. That's just an order of men. That's just a, a continually of doing things. Christ did it once and for all, died on the cross. It's over. So here you see the shepherds have gone out to tell people about the love of God. Okay? Now, I said to you that there are some other things there that are, that, that, that are strange. And, and quite often you see uh, uh, scenes uh, uh, depicted, and it, it's common, to have the wise men at the manger. But that's not true. Absolutely not true, and I'm going to read you why that that's not true, and uh, well, you'll see that, that, that that's that it's part of the Christmas story. Absolutely, were that the manger? Absolutely not. The Bible says they weren't. Okay, turn to the book of uh, Matthew, the first of the uh, New Testament, and go to chapter two, and we'll read from verse one. It says this: Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, not to Bethlehem. No, no, they came to Jerusalem. The Bible says so. And this is after Christ. This is a couple of years after Christ, though. Read on. Now they're saying, verse 2, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we've seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. They've come to ver worship the Lord Jesus Christ. I saw the star. Now these men had travelled from the east, which is, uh, I guess, you know, uh, my geography may not be 100%, but it would be where modern day Afghanistan is today, in, in that sort of region, and they're travelling from that area into Jerusalem. So it, it's not a short journey when you're doing it by camel or horseback or, or whatever, or foot, whatever they were doing. Verse 3. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. So these wise men had come there and said, listen, there's, there's a saviour born. There's a king born. And you could imagine that the <laughs> Herod's the king. Hey, who's trying to take over my reign? I'll get rid of him. Anyway, let's read on. And when he had gathered all the chief priests, note, there's the religious again. <clears throat> And the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Right? Yeah. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. Isn't it funny how these religious people knew all about Christ, knew where he was going to be born, yet when he came, rejected him, put him on the cross? Wow. And verse 6 And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, Art thou art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. They knew the Bible. <laughs> Just, they missed Christ. Verse 7. Then Herod, when he had heard privily, called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. When you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. So they'd gone to Jerusalem and he had sent them to Bethlehem because he had no idea that Jesus was already born. 
verse 9. When they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the child was. So they followed the star. They didn't follow what Herod said. Herod said, go to Bethlehem. But they didn't. They just kept following the star. Verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with great exceeding joy. Now verse 11. This is why it tells you, folks, that it wasn't in Bethlehem and it wasn't in a manger. <laughs> the wise men weren't there. Verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child. Young child, folks. Not a baby in a house. There you go. It's part of the Christmas story, but nothing to do with the manger. Just remember that. In verse 11, I'll read it again. When they come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, fell down and worshipped him. And when they have opened their treasures, they presented him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In verse 12, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Another furphy there, folks, about the wise men being at the manger. They never came to the manger. By the time they had got to Jerusalem, Jesus was a young child, no longer a baby. And he was in a house where the star had led them. Okay, the star led them to the house. It's amazing what wise men do as opposed to unwise men, isn't it? You see, Herod wasn't wise, not at all. He was fearful. And you know what a lot of offence is? A lot of offence is fear, folks. And insecurity. That's what it is. When you're offended by something, you're fearing something. And these people that are offended by Christmas or offended by the Christmas story, your whole offence is just insecurity. It's fear. Fear that just maybe what? The Christians are telling you might be right. You know, I once had a, a professor um, speak with me. And uh, I love speaking with professors uh, because I just ask them to show me some proof. Um, and most of the time they can't. Um, but there are some good professors out there, some, some men that uh, God has allowed to do great things, especially in the fields of medicine and other areas. But spe speaking with professors and people and, and you, you really just have to come back to the common sense thing and just simply ask them the, the, the question that I always ask. And I say, well, look, hey, how much do you know about everything that's, that's, out, that's out there, everything in the entire universe? How much do you think that you know or I know or, or anybody else? What, what, even the smartest person on earth, what percentage of things that are out there do you think we know? And <laughs> the honest professor will always say, well, probably less than 1%, you know? And I say, yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. But what that does mean is there's 99% or more out there that you don't know about. And God exists in that. Folks, that's what happens. When we become so wise in our own eyes that we know everything, and that's a prideful thing, that is when we start thinking that things are offensive. That is when we start thinking, I'm going to find a way to get rid of this. I'm going to find a way to, 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 to uh, uh, you know, destroy this. I'm going to find a way that it doesn't happen anymore. You know, it's like the, the old story, and I can't remember it word for word, where um, there, there was a, a house uh, somewhere of a, of a famous man who um, said, you know, throughout his life, his whole aim was to, to destroy Bibles. That was his whole aim destroy Bibles, destroy Christianity. He said by the end of his life, he was going to destroy Christianity in the world. He was going to burn Bibles. He was going to destroy everything because it, it was hurting humanity. He was offended. Well, <laughs> ironically, when he passed away, guess what his house became? It became, became a Bible printing press. <laughs> you see, God knows your intentions. God knows what you're about. God knows when you scream out against a Christian or you scream out against Christmas or you scream out against Christ. God knows what your heart's about. And you know, when you start going around telling people, I'm offended, God knows what you're doing. 
No, doesn't worry me. You can say anything you want about Christmas. You can say anything you want about Christ. You're accountable for it. We're all accountable for it. For anything I've done and said, I'm accountable for it and so are you. That's not offensive. Everyone's in the same place. God of equality. All lives matter. That's what Christmas is about, folks. Christmas is about all lives matter. Not any particular group of people. Every group of people. God of equality here. That's why Christ came. Did he come just for one group of people? Certainly not. And uh, this is, don't be misled by Calvinists who say, he only came for the elect. That, that's discrimination again. Calvinism is absolute discrimination. It's nonsense that God elects people. You choose. You choose to come to Christ. It's your choice. The religious in the days of Christ chose not to come to him. They chose to hand him to the Romans to be killed. Religion won't get you to heaven, folks. No priest, no pastor, no minister will get you to heaven. The only thing that ever gets you to heaven is a personal relationship by asking forgiveness of sins and accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. Nothing else. You're not elected. Don't wait for God to say, oh, you're so wonderful because you've done such good works that I'm going to take you into heaven. That doesn't work because that nullifies why Christ even came. It nullifies why Christ suffered. It nullifies the work of the cross. If you can work any way to heaven, now, God wants you to do good things to help others. He wants you to have peace. He wants you to have goodwill. But the only way is through the birth of Jesus Christ, who was born in Bethlehem, born to a virgin, born in a manger, grew up, did miracles, gave us the gospel, suffered, died and bled on the cross at Calvary for your sins and my sins, rose again on the third day and sits at the right hand of God. That's what it is. That's why these wonderful old carols are sung at Christmas. Listen to the words, what they say. God is going to save you if you call on him. Listen to the words. Go and read the words of Hark to Herald. What does it say? Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. What's a second birth? The second birth is when you're born again in Christ. You can't be born a Christian. I've told you this before. It's absolutely impossible. The Bible says thou must confess Christ with thy mouth to be a Christian. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You must believe. You must confess. You can't inherit that. You're not just a Christian because your mum, your dad, your papa, your grandpa was a Christian. It doesn't work like that. Never has, never will. The Bible says so. Or the religious might tell you something different. But don't listen to that. Because they're the ones who put Christ on the cross. If you're stuck in religion, get out of it. Get out of it. Because it's, it, it's, it's a dead end. You know, when we talk about religion, I guess people get very mixed up about different religions. Okay, There's the morbid religion when they walk around. They throw incense. That's not going to get you to heaven. Okay? And then there's the one where they throw their hands up in the air and then throw their bodies around and scream out. It might give them some fulfillment, but doesn't do anything for God. God is a God of order. He doesn't want that. God wants worship that's in order, but joyful worship that's in order. Not morbid. Well, for the incense around. No, he doesn't want that either. And he doesn't want intellectual pride either. Whether they think they're so smart and they can add things to the Bible and, 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 and give us new revelations, that's nonsense as well. Don't fall for that. The Bible says it was closed. The end of Revelation, it said anyone who adds to this Bible, the curses written in this book and the plagues and the pestilences written in this book will be added to them. If they've got a new revelation and they're telling you something new that's not in this book, don't listen. That's religion. That's not fact. Christmas. The true meaning of Christmas, the true story of Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ. There is no other Saviour. There is no other name given under heaven by which men must be saved. The Bible tells us that. And today I want to encourage you, enjoy Christmas, love Christmas, but understand why Christmas is so important. Don't worry about all the other things that people want to tell you about Christmas. It's only about one thing, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ and our reconciliation with him for an eternal home in heaven. There's nothing else, folks. Stay away from all the other things. May the peace and love 
enjoy a good will of Christmas be with you all through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. God bless. Bye for now.